Good morning and uh, welcome this morning to Morning Prayer. If you've just been watching me kind of making faces at the at the screen, I do apologise. I'm never quite sure exactly when it starts. I hope this finds you well in good heart and in good spirits. Uh, Pippa joins us today because the sun has gone in, so um, she uh, wants to find the warmest place, or the most comfortable place for her. And she wants to join us, don't you? I hope this, as I said, I hope this finds you well. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the last uh, few days of a nice warm weather. Um, I hope it's not been too uh, difficult to sleep or uncomfortable. Um, but I think there's there's a change coming. I'm just looking at my computer screen. It says rain coming. Right, there we go. Today is a day where we remember Charles Fuge Lauda. Born at Bath in 1820, the son of a banker and educated at Exeter College, Oxford, where he's influenced by the Tractarians, Charles Lauda became one of the best known slum priests in Victorian London. Ordained in 1843, he worked initially in the West Country before moving to London to join the staff of St Barnabas Pimlico at a time of riots and legal prosecution because of the parish's advanced ceremonial practices. Cool. Riot and legal prosecution. While in Pimlico, he was involved in the foundation of the Society of the Holy Cross to defend and strengthen the spiritual life of the clergy, to defend the faith of the church and to carry on and aid mission work both at home and abroad. At a time of hostility and persecution, the society brought together ritualist clergy for mutual support and encouragement. Inspired to engage an urban mission by reading A Life of St Vincent de Paul, uh, who we remember a little bit later in the month, Lauda moved across London in 1856 to become the curate at St George's in the East, another parish that was to suffer from the mid-Victorian phenomenon of anti-ritualist rioting because of his style of worship. Lauda's task was to run the St George's Mission in Wapping, one of the, mo one of the worst slum areas in to the East End. To him, mission was not a short-lived campaign, but a permanent Christian presence in an area where the church had no foothold and where it would, would have to earn the respect and confidence of the local people. The mission started with a single room as a base, and progressed in due course to a borrowed iron church. Lauda's residence in their, great, in their midst greatly endeared him to the local people, to whom he was affectionately known as Father Lauda, especially after his efforts on their behalf in the East End cholera outbreak. Eventually the iron church was superseded by a purpose-built bi purpose -built brick church for the new parish of St Peter's, London Docks, that was carved out of St George's Parish with Lauda as its first vicar in 1866. Exhausted by his long years of work, Lauda resigned the living of St Peter's in 1880 and retired to Chislehurst. He died soon afterwards and amid scenes of obvious grief, large crowds of East Enders attended his funeral to mourn the priest who had served them so selflessly and for so long. Charles Lauda. The thoughts of anti-ritualist riots, um, or riots because of the way worship was conducted, seems uh, seems amazing. Really, seems amazing. Not making it terribly easy, cat. No, ouch. Um, because of the warmer climbs, I'm actually wearing a pair of shorts at the moment. Um, Pippa's claws um, don't distinguish between skin and cloth. So um, she's making her presence felt. So if I let out a little bit of, um, if I let out a little bit of a scream, you'll know why. Mm. Or a facial expression like that. <laughs> oh, 
O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, Sovereign God, Creator of all. To you be glory and praise for ever. You founded the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the work of your hands. In the fullness of time you made us in your image, and in these last days you have spoken to us. In your Son, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. As we rejoice in the gift of your presence among us, let the light of your love always shine in our hearts, your spirit ever renew our lives, and your praises ever be on our lips. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 14, Psalm 40. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Corrupt are they and ab abominable in their wickedness. There is no one that does good. The Lord has looked down from heaven upon the children of earth to see if there is anyone who is wise and seeks after God. But every one has turned back. All alike have become corrupt. There is none that do, does good. No, not one. Have they no knowledge, those evildoers, who eat up my people as if they eat, ate bread, and do not call upon the Lord? There shall be in there shall they be in great fear, for God is it in the company of the righteous. Though they would, though. They would confound the counsel of the poor, yet the Lord shall be their refuge. O oh, that Israel's salvation will come out of Zion. When the Lord restores the fortunes of his people, then will Jacob rejoice and Israel be glad. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. God of heaven, look with mercy on all who are, who are consumed by ignorance and greed, and let the children of earth know that you are God for ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. These words from Wisdom, chapter 4, beginning to read at verse 7. But the righteous, though they die early, will be at rest. For old age is not honoured for length of time, or measured by number of years. But understanding is great grey hair for anyone, and a blameless life is ripe old age. There were some who pleased God and were loved by him, and while living among sinners were taken up. They were caught up so that evil might not change their understanding or guile deceive their souls. For the fascination of wickedness obscures what is good, and roving desire perverts the innocent mind. Being perfected in a short time, they fulfilled long years, for their souls were pleasing to the Lord. Therefore he took them quickly from the midst of wickedness. Yet the people saw and did not understand, or take such a thing to heart, that God's grace and mercy are with his elect and that he watches over his holy ones. The righteous who have died will condemn the ungodly who are living, and the youth that is quickly per perfected will condemn the prolonged old age of the, of the unrighteous. For they will see the end of the wise, and will not understand what the Lord purposed for them, for what he kept them, for what he kept them safe. The unrighteous will see and will have contempt for them, 
but the Lord will laugh them to scorn. And this they will, after after this, they will become dishonoured corpses, and an outrage among the dead for ever, because he will dash them speechless to the ground and shake them from their foundations, and they will be utterly they will be left utterly dry and barren, and they will suffer anguish, and the memory of them will perish. They will come with dread when their sins are reckoned up, and their lawless deeds will convict them to their face. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It all sounds very uh, awesome. It sounds very, um, I'm trying to think of the word, fire and brimstone, I suppose. But this is wisdom, and this is kind of poetry. So it's painting a picture with words, really, of of the effects of turning away from God but also that idea of um, that idea that idea that Jesus our God however um, trying to explain why some people might move on to glory earlier than others that it's not a sign of God's it, it could be a sign of 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 God's no, it's not blessing kind of quite like that um, the way that this writer puts it is that they they don't want to God doesn't want them to be caught up in the ways of the world but um yes some poetry put it that way Come to a song of the covenant. I have given you as a light to the nations, and I have called you in righteousness. Thus says God who created the heavens, who fashioned the earth and all that dwells in it, who gives breath to the people upon it, and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord, and I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the captives from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name, my glory I give to no other. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. I have given you as a light to the nation, nations, I have called you in righteousness. She seems to be sitting very proudly, thinking, you know, don't you? Hmm? you know, I think she knows exactly what she's doing. A short reading today from Mark's Gospel, just three verses. Mark chapter 10, verses 32, 33 and 34. They were on a road, on the road, going up to Jerusalem, and Jesus was walking ahead of them. They were amazed, and those who followed were afraid. He took the twelve aside again and began to tell them what was going to happen to him, saying, See, we are going up to Jerusalem and the Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death. Then they will hand him over to the Gentiles. They will mock him, and spit upon him, and flog him, and kill him. And after three days he will rise again. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh, the way that my tablet is set up at the moment that's th seven lines of scripture three verses but actually Jesus that the words are very powerful he describes exactly what is going to happen over the last few days especially as we've been reading Mark 
we've heard then they went to such and such or then they went and they were traveling constantly traveling to Jerusalem constantly on this path and sometimes you might think well where, where's going to come next what's going to happen next and Jesus has been very plain this journey is coming to an end and coming to an end soon this is how it's going to end and then we have two or three lines of not very nice things con condemnation handing them over to the Gentiles mocking spitting flogging and killing and then eight words and after three days he will rise again let's cut that down even to four he will rise again words of resurrection through all of it words of hope so whatever journey we're on maybe today maybe uh, as a nation maybe as a community maybe as an individual remember those four words he will rise again God overcomes and offers us that hope these words from the prophet Isaiah we use as our responses Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. I have called you by name. You are mine. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Fear not. For I have redeemed you, I have called you by name, you are mine. You promised, O oh God, to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. You promised, O God, to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. We now come to our blessings. So you might like to draw to mind those places um, and situations and people that you particularly would like to feel God's blessings this day. Sorry, cat scratching. Oh, cat, don't do that. Um, excuse me. 
I like to think of those people in your community. Those situations in your community or the situations in your family that you particularly wish to be feeling God's blessings this day. Speaking out blessings in our parishes and across our communities comes from the Bible which tells us that when we speak blessings over people, God responds. So claiming the promises of God's word, we pray in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we take upon ourselves the authority Jesus delegated to us and in his name we speak out to every household across our communities. We bless you in the name of the Lord. We bless your relationships that they may be strong and whole. We bless the relationship between each partner that it may be loving, forgiving, merciful and strong. We bless every intergenerational relationship within each household that there may be peace and love and understanding flowing between each one. In Jesus' name we bless every network of wholesome and supportive friendship. We bless your health that you may be strong and well. In Jesus' name we resist any sickness or disease which seeks to invade our communities. And to every person we say, be well, be strong, be healthy. To any who are sick right now, we say we bless you in Jesus' name for a speedy and full recovery. For all those suffering in body, mind or spirit, we lift them before the Lord. And we name just some of them. Gwen, Sylvia, Trudy, Mark, Addie and her family, William and his family, Pauline, Linda, Roy, Stuart, Beryl, Eunice, George, Bob, John, Mary, Jordan, Mary, Wendy, Natalie, John, Janet, Annette, Jim, Joe and the family, John, Liz, Dave and the family, Daniel, Peter, Alvin and their family, Shane, Tilly, Jan, Linda and her family, Chris, Oliver and his parents, Chris and Danielle, Anna, pray for Angela as she recovers from her operation, for Mary, Roger, Chris, Martina and Traudel and their family, Andy, Catherine, Anne, Sarah, Nicholas, Martin, Pat, Jeff and Hilary, Tom, Julie, Esme, Nilva and her family, Len, Margaret's family, Finley, John and Val, Peter and Bridget, Ken, Eric's friends and family, Rose, Barbara and Geraldina's family. Again, we say to all those that are sick right now that we bless you in Jesus' name for a speedy recovery. We bless those who are in the autumn of their lives and all those who live and work in domiciliary and in um, residential care, that they may know the peace and presence of God in their hearts. And in Jesus' name we pray that they will have assurance and hope for the future. 
we speak blessings of patience, wisdom, compassion, protection and love to all carers and associated staff. We bless the wealth of every person in our communities that they may have plenty to replace poverty. We bless you to have enough to live and enough to give. We bless the work of your hands that whatever you turn your hand to which is wholesome may be profitable. We bless every wholesome enterprise that's conducted by you that it may prosper and be successful. In Jesus' name we bless the businesses operating within our bounds that they will flourish and employee-employer relationships will be wholesome, fair and full of integrity. We bless our local preschools and schools, universities and colleges, playgroups, toddler groups, all places of learning, all places of training and development. And we pray that they may be secure and safe for learners and staff alike. We bless the young people's capacity to learn and to build and develop relationships. We particularly lift before you all those who are on our hearts, those young people that we know. And again, we name just some of them. Joel, Talitha, Grace, Emily, Lily, Jacob, Hannah, Jake, Oscar, Kerry, Anton, Callum, Phoebe, Ellie, Travis, Nathan, Ruby, Noah, Evie, Charlie, Jack, Mia, Luca, Joden, Ethan, Aidan, Amalia. We lift all of those, all of those who have gone back to school over these last this last week or so, all of those that are planning to go off to university or to college, all those starting preschool or nursery. Calm theirs and their parents' fears and anxieties. And we pray they will feel your presence, parents and young people alike, this day and always. And we bless the governors and all staff at these places of learning that they will know that they can trust and flourish if they put their faith in the Lord Jesus. We lift before you, especially all those who are on our hearts, and again, naming just some of them, Michael, Marie, Heather, Sarah, Matthew, Asher, Rebecca, Chris, Joshua, Sue, Susan, Gareth, Nick, Lisa and Noah. And we pray your blessing on all contact the church has with them in Jesus' name. We bless the local doctors, nurses, district nurses, carers, all the staff of Sandalwood Court, all those that work in our local surgeries, pharmacies, health centres, Pray for health visitors, all those that work in public health, all those that work in our hospitals, clinics, vaccination centres, test centres, all volunteers, all those that work in logistics and administration, all those that keep our health service and public health running. And we pray for them as they minister to people, that they may have wisdom, guidance, protection, gentleness, compassion and understanding for their patients. We pray for the emergency services as they operate within our bounds, 
that they will be blessed with safety, protection and wisdom. We bless those working in the ambulance, police and fire stations in our town, and especially the police and fire stations within our parishes. We pray for our national government and local borough and parish councils and we pray that they will be blessed as they serve their communities, that they may be guided as they seek the best for them and look towards the future with wisdom. And we pray your blessings, dear Lord, on all those on whom we depend for our daily needs, all those people that we might not see, but if they were not to do their job, we would definitely notice a difference. And we speak to all the Christians in our communities and we say we bless you in the name of the Lord. That the Holy Spirit and the word of God will flow out from you in power. We bless the hearts of all who live here that you may be quickened to hear and respond to the voice of the living God. We bless all who live and work here that the overspill of blessings and the presence of the kingdom of God may fall upon you. And the collect for today. Almighty God, whose only Son has opened for us a new and living way into your presence, give us pure hearts and steadfast wills to worship you in spirit and in truth, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And using whichever is your preferred version, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining me this morning. Uh, it is a great privilege and pleasure to be with you. Uh, it is coffee morning this morning over at St Margaret Centre, so please do head along there if you wish. Uh, I, um, I'm probably going to be there quite a bit later this morning. Uh, going out for a meeting um, with someone from the Salvation Army today uh, in about oh, 25 minutes. So uh, I need to get a wriggle on. Um, it's um, also, thank you so much for all the donations that we've had. Uh, speaking to some colleagues, uh, I'm going to come and collect some stuff today if there is any stuff. If you, if you do have things on Sunday, please do feel free to bring it. But we're going to just call a halt to things just for the moment. Uh, at the moment, there's um, been such a generous response from yourselves and from uh, from others uh, that may, means that um, there is enough at the moment. Um, there are issues around storage as well and sorting it. So we're just going to put a little bit of a pause on things. Anything collect? I will collect things today um, because I said I would. Um, but but after um, after that, and and if you do have things for Sunday, please do bring them. Um, we're going to just put a pause on it for the moment. I would say one thing, and it brought a real uh, almost a tear to my eye. Uh, talking to a colleague yesterday, uh, some people donated some brand new baby clothes or brand new new baby stuff, and it was used. On Wednesday when um, uh, there was a new arrival um, so at a time of crisis and of great joy there was comfort in the generosity of others so thank you have a great day um, I look forward to that time when we're together again um, if not today then hopefully tomorrow morning. Oh.
That's grand. That is grand. So, may the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness and protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. God bless you and keep you. See you soon.